I now pressed, uh, we're, we're recording. Today is March 8th. This is the meeting of the Disability Access Advisory Committee. It's 1131. I believe we have all members present except Marty Smith. Do you wanna confirm that just by saying yes? Or Maureen, you can just look. I think everyone is present except Marty Smith. That is correct. Okay, and Pat DeAngelis is present. And um, so do we have any announcements? Nope. Okay, then we can get to the, um, what are we getting to? Oh, there is the first, let me look here. Let me see if I can even get it. Um, One second, announcements. Oh, we don't have anybody from the public here, right? No. Okay. Um, reappointments to the doc. Pat has been reappointed, yay, from the <laughs> select board, from the select board, from the town council. Hello, Pat. Yeah. You're allowed to say hello. <laughs> I keep forgetting to unmute myself. Oh, Hello, okay. Everyone. I'm really glad to be back. <laughs> and I hope okay. I hope I make more meetings than I've been making recently. So good okay. to see everyone. Yay. Um, so three of us need to be reappointed, Elise and Ruth and me. Um, so what, what do we have to do, Maureen? So the town manager's office reached out to Myra and myself, um, indicating that Elise, Myra, and Ruth are up for a reappointment. And so the town council will need to vote on it. And uh, so Angela Mills from the town manager's uh, office asked if Myra and myself would recommend reappointing um, Elise, Myra, and, and Ruth. And uh, Myra said enthusiastically, yes. So that's that's it's a little weird to be enthusiastic about it, reappointing yourself. I have to say it feels a little <laughs> conflict of interesty, but what the heck? <laughs> so, but okay. what do we do? What do what do the three what of do us do? What do I do? Um, yeah. I don't think I, any I don't think anyone needs to take any action. So, um, you know, the town council um, at one of their future um, meetings, they will make a motion to vote to reappoint um, the oh. three members. And um, I think it's um, I don't think a discussion or or your attendance is needed, but it, it's just to let you know. But if if for okay. some reason that you feel that you want to retire from being on this committee or or you know there's a time conflict you know if 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 you don't feel like you would like to be on continue on this committee after the end of this june let us know but uh, otherwise we would love for you all to continue to serve on this committee oh so elise and ruth have not been approached yet no uh, uh, angela reached out to you as the chairperson ah uh, okay so Elise and Ruth, I guess, yeah, I'd like, I'd love it if you'd stay, but you need to let us know if you don't want to. Um, okay. I thought you'd been reached out to, I'll, I'll, sorry I'll about continue. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll continue. Okay. All right, yay. All right, um, and then of course, while I answered Angela's email, um, I also told her that we have a vacancy that we've had for six, well, now seven months. And I'm, um, I asked her to look into it and she said she would. And so far I haven't heard from her, but she's got other stuff to do too. So she's aware that we would like to have another member. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Um, um, let's see. Oh, the curriculum for the Amherst Public Schools, Tori wrote a nice letter on our behalf. Thanks, Tori. And um, then it was reframed a little bit so that a little different version of it would go directly to the department head from the one that would go to the school committee, but it's essentially the I, same letter. Yeah, and but I um, want to talk about it. Yeah, I have, I, I may have missed it, but if you 
look at it and I don't have it in front of me right now, but it says your um, for the one that's going to the school committee, it says your curriculum. Shouldn't it oh. say uh, it should say Sarah Barbara just. Curriculum. Oh, thank you. Yep. Or it could just say the curriculum or the and leave it simple. Yeah. Oh, good catch. Good catch. Good catch. Okay, um, did anyone want to make any comments about the letters? Would anybody like to vote or make a motion to send the letters? Did I make a motion or I wrote them? So I don't. You can make a motion, you wrote them, it's fine. All right, I'll make a motion that we send them to the school committee and Sarah Barbara just because they're two separate ones. Yeah. Do we have a second? A second, second. Elise. Okay. So we have a second, and we need a roll call vote um, for sending the letter. I think it's very nice that that we're that. I mean, I hope they think it's very nice. I mean, it's it's always okay. nice to send a thank you note and to acknowledge the work. Sarah's so proud of this work. It's amazing. She should be. Okay, um, who all in favor? No, let's see. All in favor of sending the letters to Sarah Barber just on behalf of the English department and to the school committee in praise of the English department, um, say aye. 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 Oppose say no. I might have to take this call. No, I don't. Okay, all right, sorry. Um, all right, uh, I'm gonna mute, so just go on without me. All right, well, so I just uh, made um, Chris Brestrup and Ben Breger um, panelists, so they'll be coming up in a second. And I can go ahead and make Tracy a panelist as well. Um, all right. So, all right. Let's see here. So, uh, the next item, I don't, is Myra on the phone? Maybe. Not really sure. But uh, I guess the next uh, item still on is. the yeah, the next item on the agenda is the status on the oh Pomeroy Village intersection project, and like two thirty or something. Um, I don't have a particular update about Thank that you. project. Okay. Bye. Um, I'm in the middle of the I know meeting. it went through the Bye. town council um, a month or two ago for a review. And so, um, Myra, so uh, about the status on the Pomeroy Village intersection project. So, I, yeah. I don't have a particular status update about that project. Um, it did go through the town council for a presentation. Um, feels like a month month or two ago and yes. so DPW is still um, you know working with their design team to um, to uh, you know further the, the the project design along um, other than that I, I don't have uh, any particular doesn't it update. have to be bid in FY22 uh, perhaps uh, I'm not sure but maybe Chris Brestrup could comment on yeah, that. Yeah, that would be great if we could know. It has to be built by a certain date, but I don't know if it has to be bid by a certain date. And I think that the DPW is still working on the plans. Um, so the last time I think they were at 25% and we're expecting to see another um, iteration at 75%, um, but I haven't seen anything recently. And um, you know, normally they would also show these things to the TAC, the uh, Transportation Advisory Committee, of which Tracy Zafian is the chair. But TAC hasn't seen anything recently either. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm imagining that the DPW is still working on the plans and when they're ready, they will show them to us. But I don't think it has to be bid in FY22. Chris, do you know if they consulted with someone about 
how to build the crosswalks and whatever they have to build so that they work for blind people, they haven't shown any evidence that they know themselves how to do it. And it's they, a very difficult kind of place to do because it's not straight lines. Yes, I think they are um, aware of the issue, but as far as whether they've reached out to a consultant, I don't know, but I see Tracy Zafian's hand is up, so she may okay. have some information about that. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Tracy, do you know anything? Um, Myra, I don't know anything on that particular point, but at the last TAC meeting last week, um, we did ask the we did ask about the status of Pomeroy Village and Guilford said he does need to spend the money within a certain amount of time and he would be coming back soon. So so a month ago, right after that meeting we, of the Well talk about last week. But after the town council meeting, which I believe was in January, I'm not sure. Or maybe I made a statement and shortly thereafter I sent Maureen, the name of the consultant that I recommended, and she, because she sent me an email and she um, suggested people to talk to. Um, and I guess I dropped the ball in, in that I didn't follow up with anybody about it. But I'm just concerned. I think all along we wanted to make sure that they were going to build this uh, properly because you only get one chance to build it. And I don't, I don't know whatever happened with that information about the consultant. Yeah, so I, I did uh, forward the contacts um, that Myra recommended. Um, their, um, I don't even know who they are. I sent the letter. It was a website, website actually. Um, and yeah. so it was like a consulting firm perhaps um, that mm, work with designing with the intention of 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 um, of considerations for uh, blind people, yeah. so um, yeah. So I I did forward that website link to Guilford as well as um, the individual from the Mass Commission on the Blind. Mike was his first name. So yeah, Dion, those are Dion. two um, two sources that DBW can reach out to uh, about. Um, you know, what recommendations uh, would they suggest to the town right. um, as they move the design forward? So I'm worried that they're not, if they haven't told, Chris doesn't know and you don't know, and I'm worried that they didn't do it. Um, so is there any I way- I can certainly send get... a follow-up email to Guilford um, with the link and the contact from um, from Mass uh, Commission on the Blind in, in, um, and say, if you haven't, you know, contacted these, these resources, please do so. Okay. Um, Pat, you're hearing this, right? Um, are you yes, there? I oh. am. And I was you just going to okay. say, if you could CC me on that uh, email, then I can bring it up during counselor comments at the next meeting. Sure. Okay. Thank you. That's good. Because I, I did make the statement in January, and then I followed it up. And we were supposed to be involved, even at the, you know, at the, right. one of the earlier stages, to make sure that they were headed in the direction of making sure it was done right. I certainly don't know how to do it right. I know nothing about topography. I know, you know, I mean, this is not my area of expertise, except Elise and I can tell you, we don't know how to tell them to do it, but we know right. how to tell them that they didn't do it right. Correct? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> okay, yeah. So there are, the, yep. there are people who know how to do it right. And that's why we wanted the, the consultation. I missed part of this because I got a phone call. Um, are we still on the um, the crosswalk thing? On Pomeroy, I just wanted to know if they had uh, consulted, if they had engaged a consultant to help them figure oh. out how best to build it for yeah. blind and visually impaired people. And nobody um, nobody knows whether they did. They were sure. told 
they they got information about who to contact, but nobody knows yet whether they okay. have done it. So I okay. mentioned your name because I said, I don't think either you or I could tell them how to build an intersection, but we could both tell them when they didn't do it right. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I must yeah, say that Pat has more influence over um, what happens than I do. Pat can reach up to the town manager yeah. and can reach down to DPW. Um, right. So when, enough said. <laughs> so I'll make sure to copy Pat in my email. Please, yep. please. Okay, Great. fabulous, thank you. Um, okay, and then the next one, oh, my speech died. So the what's town the yeah, what's the status of the, um, the town common project? Oh yeah, where are we with that? Marty um, sent, in the letter that we sent to Dave Zomek, there was, Marty had cited some of the um, MA, uh, a B M A M A A B, I don't know. Um, rules uh, about where the parking has to be at versus, you know, and grades and things like that. Do you know if they paid any attention to her comments? And do you know where they are with the design of the parking for the North Common? Um, uh, Chris Brestrup has raised her hand. I don't know if you okay. wanted to. Cool. To that. Yes. So that project is on a little bit of a hold right now. Um, we are waiting to hear about an alternative um, funding source. And once we find out about that, we'll um, know more about how much we can spend on the project. And um, I think Guilford, Guilford is again, sort of the gating item here. He is doing the, um, the plans, Guilford and his team. Mm -hmm. And um, so I don't think they're working on the plans right now until they have a better sense of what the funding is. So um, yeah, like I said, it's on hold. It's um, on hold. And, okay. and again, if you have concerns about um, handicapped accessibility, you can certainly tell us, but you know, Pat is also here and she can- uh, We sent a letter to along. Dave Zomek. I don't know who's seen it. Have you seen it? I mean, I don't know who got that letter, Maureen. Um, I, I don't know. Um, I'm, unfortunately, I, I can't recall if Pat uh, re received a copy, but I can certainly um, forward along. I'd appreciate that. I don't okay. believe I have. <laughs> and you could send it to Chris as well. And I just want to say to Chris and to Pat that at the last meeting that we had forgive me, I don't remember the name of the gentleman who came to talk about the sidewalk at Kendrick Park. Who was the man that- Oh, um, yeah, uh, Paul Dethier, who's- Yeah, um, okay. Uh, Lance, yeah. He's a registered landscape architect that works uh, within the DPW. Okay, so we talked to him about our preferred design for Kendrick Park, and we told him that the same principle, because that's also a one-way street in the plan, the same principle would have to hold there about how to, where to put the, you know, the, the lane and how not to put the bicycles on the same level as the pedestrians and that the bicycles needed to be at the street level and the pedestrians needed to be raised so that there wouldn't be any question about where a pedestrian was. Um, and it's the same principle we told him that it that needed to govern that particular uh, redesign of the west side of the North Common sidewalk. And I just want to make sure that you heard it, Chris, and that Pat, you heard it, because mm -hmm. Guilford and Paul and Paul Deter or Deathier, whatever it is, I'm sorry, um, heard it. So I did not attend that TAC meeting, but maybe Tracy did. I did not attend the meeting where they talked about that particular item. I thought that that, hi, this is Tracy. Um, yep. It hasn't actually come back before TAC. We've asked Guilford to talk about it at our March 24th meeting. I believe the last meeting was at, um, at the DAC meeting, you know, yep. and I got my updates from you. And I also heard last night at the council meeting, that for the agenda for the council meeting on March 21st, that Guilford has some updates. I'm not 100% sure if that will be on the council agenda on March 21st or not. 
But okay. Myra, we do share your concerns. And yeah. I did reach out to various people. And that's one of the reasons that we've asked tax asked to see it again. Um, I might have okay. some other concerns about that project too. I can bring them up now or later, but um, well, we can, just, we can just, do it later because right now okay. that's not the agenda item. But I guess um, I just want to say just so <clears throat> Chris and Pat here that plan B that Paul Dethier had is the one that we endorsed. He gave us plan A. We, for various reasons, three or four of us spoke out against it. And okay. then we told him what he want, what we wanted. And he's, I said, do you have a plan that looks like that? And he said, well, actually I do. And he pulled it out. I, I, you know, and I said, that sounds like plan B. And he said, yes, we call it, I forget what they called it, option B. Yeah. So I said, we want option B. And the same thing that the same principle that you held in the design for option B should also pertain to the North Common. And I wanna make sure that we don't have to go through this again because we already talked to him about it. He seemed perfectly agreeable to it. I mean, did he not? I mean, Marty was there and she was speaking to it, but uh, she's not here today. But Elise, did you, I mean, I mean, and everybody, did you hear him being agreeable to plan B? I think I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did. And he, uh, he did end up emailing me uh, option B. And so I can forward that along to, uh, to uh, everyone present here today. Um, so you know that. And um, I am preparing a memo um, uh, from on behalf of the DAC uh, with your recommendations um, regarding um, uh, option B and your support of that. So we, we can certainly send that along to uh, Paul Dethier and Guilford. OK. I mean, it didn't seem like there was any conflict. It seemed like there was a reasonable discussion. He had already drawn up the plan. It wasn't like we were telling him anything he hadn't thought about. Yeah. The one um, sort of uh, clarifying question is, so for the North Pleasant Street project uh, along the westerly side of Kendrick Park, they were trying to accommodate uh, on-street parking, sidewalk, and bike lanes. North Common, I do not know if bike lanes are are proposed, um, but that that's just you know a subtle difference of of. Um, um, but people the can ride their bike there because it's a road, but it's only a one way street. The, so the law says because it's a one way street, the bike can only go one way. Is that is that is that what if you're a cyclist that's supposed to be the law you obey? Um, Chris, because I can see people riding their bike there the wrong way and they need to know where they're supposed to ride it. Yeah, and um, although the concept plan, um, as Paul Dethier indicated at that meeting, um, that where they are right now is at a concept level and they weren't showing uh, markings of how they would delineate um, the bike lane. Um, but as the project moves along, um, towards a, you know, actual construction, they'll, they'll of course update the plans to show the exact um, way that they are going to indicate, you know, through signage or markings on the, on the, on the pavement uh, where the bike lanes are. And again, so option B, uh, the sidewalk would be at, at one level with a curb and at the level of the road, there would be a bike lane heading southbound and then it would be travel lane travel lane then there would be on street parking and then um there would be a uh, level and then it levels up with a with curbing uh, to a sidewalk and there there would be a sidewalk um with i, I believe would be a uh, um um where there would be a, uh, a shared pathway for uh, a bike lane and um, uh, pedestrians. Oh. I believe, I, I almost wanna, I would need to pull up the plan. Um, to My confirm. sense was that the bikes, the northbound bikes would go in the road with You the might cars. be right. I, um, let's see here, option B, I can actually pull it up right now because this was a conversation maybe a month ago. So maybe my memory is fading a little bit. Um, whoop, whoop. 
Okay, so here is a section view. I'll describe it. Um, so on the west side of Kent, of uh, North Pleasant Street, it would be a six foot wide sidewalk at uh, a particular grade with a curb. And then at the lower elevation, there would be a five foot uh, bike lane heading southbound. And there would be a, um, a 15 foot wide northbound travel lane. And then there would be an eight foot wide angled uh, back end parking space. And then there would be um, uh, a curbing that is now at, at a higher elevation than the travel lane that would be a six, six foot wide sidewalk. Right. And so that and was- Pedestrians yeah. go on the sidewalk and the bikes go in the 15 foot- Correct. Travel lane. Yeah, yep. okay. That's what I thought, okay. Yeah. Anyway, all right. So if we're if the North Common is on hold, we can wait on that one. So the only one that seems a little urgent might be Pomeroy that we don't have enough information about. Okay. Um, what's the next item? I'm sorry. The next item is um, is the status of the 2021 Mass DOT Shared Streets and Spaces Funding Grant Project oh, yeah. along East Pleasant Street, and we have. Uh, planner Ben Breger, who will give us a status update. Great. Hi, everyone. Thanks for Hi, having me. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about the Shared Streets Grant. Um, as you know, the town received uh, three Shared Streets Grants, and they're in various stages of complete in progress um, and kind of just getting started. So the uh, most recent shared streets grant the third one is what i'm going to talk about today and that um was focused on uh crosswalk improvements in the north part of downtown focused on east pleasant street and triangle street mm -hmm. and i have a, a few slides i can show you um but i think the purpose of the uh, kind of discussion today is uh to kind of just give you an, an update on where we are with the progress of implementing the grant and then specifically, we do have a, a kind of a new proposal for a, a or a proposal for a new crosswalk um, that we'd like to discuss with you. And we have uh, drawings for, that a DPW has produced that I'd like to show you all and get some feedback. Um, so I will uh, share my screen here. Um, and so just to provide an update on the Shared Streets Grant, um, we have implemented part of the work so far. Um, we have, uh, I've, I'll show you some pictures in a second, but we have uh, three crosswalks that have been repainted um, and, and kind of resurfaced. Uh, uh, that happened in the, um, in the fall. We have, um, along with those three crosswalks, there's six uh, curb ramps and tactile surface pads that have been redone. Um, with the new uh, repainted crosswalks. Um, there's also been 200 feet approximately of sidewalk that's been uh, ripped up and repaved. And that's kind of along uh, East Pleasant Street near the, the spoke um, in that area. Um, we've placed an order for uh, five pairs of rapid response uh, flashing beacons. The, uh, they're audible uh, rapid response flashing beacons. Those have been ordered. Uh, unfortunately, like everything nowadays, there's supply chain issues and those are uh, probably going to take many more months to actually be delivered, but the order has been placed. Um, we also, I'm going to talk about this a bit more. We have a proposal for a new crosswalk um, uh, kind of at the Garcia's restaurant, uh, the former Bertucci's restaurant. And that would connect to uh, the Kendrick Park playground, kind of where that uh, uh, there's a, a, tra a trail that leads up to the playground. Right now, it kind of just dead ends in the sidewalk on East Pleasant Street. And so we'd propose to that, that pathway would lead right into a new crosswalk. And then lastly, uh, some work that we also plan to do with the grant is to fill a sidewalk gap um, along Triangle Street that I believe has remained uh, kind of a, a gap in the sidewalk since the Kendrick Place development went, went in and was developed. 
Um, there's a utility box right there. And uh, I think there's some utility work done when the that building was developed and the sidewalk gap has remained. So we're gonna use some of this funding to kind of complete that gap in the in the sidewalk network. Um, Along the side of the building? Is that where you are? You're on the yeah. right next to the building on the side. Exactly, yeah, right next okay. to the building. Now you have to go out in the street. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, so here's a map kind of showing a, kind of where all those locations are being uh, planned for. So um, there would be new, the new crosswalks that have been built are um, on the south side of Kendrick Park um, at the intersection of North Pleasant and uh, I guess this is, McCle no, this isn't McClellan. What is that? Uh, uh, cottage. Cottage. Uh. Hi. No, cottage. <laughs> Wait, point where, uh, point your mouth. Oh, yeah. So it's the, yeah, intersection of North Pleasant. I guess that might be South Prospect Street or something Oh, there, like that. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then there's also been crosswalk work done um, where Prey Street and East Pleasant Street meet. Um, there's been two and two crosswalks to actually cross over North Pleasant or East Pleasant and then to cross over Prey Street. Um, that, that's where the work cool. has been done there. Um, the new crosswalk is being proposed for um, kind of the third green arrow from the top at Garcia's and Kendrick Park. And then um, we do plan How to- How close to the roundabout is that? Um, that's a good question. I would say, you know, maybe, you know, 100 or 150 feet or so, something like that. So it's south of the roundabout. Correct. Yep. But it's north of the Prey Street. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so um, you might remember that uh, part of this original grant uh, proposal was to look at the intersection of Prey Street, Cottage Street, and Triangle Street. Um, unfortunately, uh, looking at that further, it became technically kind of infeasible to, to make improvements at that intersection. Uh, so we've kind of changed course a bit um, since that happened. It's a very uh, physically constrained site and there's utility poles that come up right against the sidewalk. So um, making a, making improvements in that area proved uh, kind of a logistical challenge and would have involved moving um, utility poles to, to find room to, to build new curb ramps and uh, place the flashing beacons in the right place. Um, so, you know, with these types of grants where we're applying very quickly and coming up with ideas, sometimes that happens where we don't have all the time in the world to um, review all the proposals carefully, but luckily um, DOT was flexible enough to allow us to switch focus to um, along uh, East Pleasant Street and to construct a new side, uh, new crosswalk over to Kendrick Park. Um, Similarly, uh, part of the original scope was along Prey Street to uh, paint the crosswalks on Prey Street. And um, after we got the grant, uh, DPW informed us that, you know, that wasn't really in their um, kind of uh, standards or downtown design standards. It kind of would be setting a new precedent for painting crosswalks um, that kind of cross into parking lots as opposed to, you know, typically they reserve the crosswalks for um, road crossings, but along Prey Street, these are uh, kind of gaps in the sidewalk that lead towards parking lots. And so, you know, unfortunately DPW did not, um, was not supporting that project. And uh, so we've again, kind of switched focus more towards flashing beacons and the new uh, crosswalk along East Pleasant Street. Um, may so I say here, something? May, yes. may I just break yeah. in here? I think that DPW wasn't opposed to painting crosswalks across those driveways. What they were opposed to was using this thermoplastic uh, material that's you know expensive and hard to maintain across the driveways. So painting with normal paint is within their you know realm of doing things, but having these thermoplastic crosswalks at parking lots was not. And they were um, reluctant to do it there because it would set a precedent for elsewhere in town. And then they would be forced to have 
thermoplastic crossings at all of the driveway crossings, and that's not feasible within budgets. So I just wanted to make that clear. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then uh, here are just a few pictures of the new uh, crosswalk and curb ramps that have been built. Um, this one is, uh, you're kind of standing at the spoke looking towards the uh, People's Bank uh, with the th new thermoplastic brick. Um, and if you recall, there wasn't any tactile warning surface here. Um, the curb ramp. I'm not also... sure where you are. Yeah, so if you're, uh, we would be at the intersection, <clears throat> excuse me, the intersection of Prey Street and uh, East Pleasant Street, kind of looking uh, south in this case, kind of towards, okay. towards the rest of downtown. Um, okay. So this uh, crosswalk has been redone. Um, Similarly, the the cross the sidewalk in this area, almost 200 feet of sidewalk from um, the spoke, you know, almost down to where the new Garcia's restaurant is, um, crossing Prey Street and then almost up to the uh, People's United Bank. That uh, sidewalk has been replaced. And then here are the two, also the two other. Uh, crosswalks that have been um, repainted. One is uh, you're standing at the People's United Bank and you're crossing over um, East Pleasant Street towards Kendrick Park. And then the other one is um, you're uh, kind of at the uh, facing Kendrick Park here um, at the intersection of North Pleasant Street. Um, and you'd be able to get over to the park that way. And again, these are the thermoplastic crosswalks as yeah. opposed to just painted. Yep, yeah. So the thermoplastic is nice because it's uh, much more durable. Stand, you don't have to repaint it that often if, if really ever, you know, it can last decades. And it has kind of a raised surface to it um, imprinted in the asphalt. Um, so it's, it's better for like slip resistance as, as well, which is nice. And kind of when cars go over, it has a little bit of a rumbling effect um to make drivers more aware of the crosswalk yeah I and, love and there's tactile surfaces at each end of the crosswalk and then the crosswalk itself has uh how would you say um contrasting colors so mm -hmm. oh yeah um so that would be helpful for those yeah. with um visual impairments mm -hmm. and anyone they're else. wonderful good yay yeah um so now i'm just going to switch gears slightly to look at the drawings for the new crosswalk. Um, so I'm going to pull up the DPW drawings here. Um, this shows the project site on the left here. It's um, yeah, so, th th so this would be considered a mid block crosswalk because there's not really it's not at an intersection per se, but it's an important crossing um, for pedestrians. You know, someone might be parking over uh, at the Prey Street lots, or they're you know having lunch or dinner at Garcia's, and then wanting to cross over to to go to Kendrick Park, uh, right towards the new playground. Um, so that was kind of the, one of the goals of this um, crosswalk was to make that crossing possible. Um, and I think to Myra's point, there's there's not another crossing between Prey Street and the roundabout. Um, which is a you know fairly large gap for kind of the downtown area, so this would fill that gap in in, in having a crosswalk um, to get to cross over East Pleasant Street here. Um, on the bottom right picture here, you can see that it 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 kind of leads it would lead right into the um, pathway that leads up to the Kendrick Park playground, and um, I can zoom in a little bit here. You can see that obviously some uh, curb ramping would be necessary because right now it just leads into a you know a six inch granite curb so that was part of the technical kind of design that the dpw had to work on was how to um make that uh you know do that curb ramp um and make that possible so i'm just going to go over to the next tab here to show the actual drawing um you know essentially uh kind of at the top here is kendrick park um they kind of meet that asphalt pathway um, and have a concrete curb ramp that leads down into the road, or sorry, into the sidewalk. Um, there would then be a, a landing area that has a 2% grade um, where you can wait to cross the road. 
um, a tactile warning surface um, as you uh, go onto the crosswalk. Um, I, it doesn't say here, but I did confirm with Paul Dethier that this would be the thermoplastic uh, kind of crosswalk as well, um, 10 feet wide with uh, one foot uh, kind of white strips on either side of the crosswalk. And then similarly, you kind of uh, come up uh, towards, uh, you cross East Pleasant, come up towards uh, Garcia's restaurant. You have again, a tactile warning pad, um, a ramp up, and then a, a landing area up on the sidewalk with a, a 2% uh, grade. And that kind of just tie, ties directly into the existing concrete sidewalk on um, along East Pleasant Street. Um, so yeah, I think we all, you know, I think this fills an important uh, gap in the kind of network of crosswalks we have downtown and is a logical place for one, given that the um, path up to the playground uh, kind of dead ends right now in the sidewalk. So it, it's a logical place to have uh, an opportunity to cross the road there. Um, and yeah, we're excited that uh, Mass DOT was kind of amenable to us uh, using the funds for this uh, project, even though it wasn't in the original scope. Um, so I'm just gonna go back to my original slideshow and just uh, have kind of a closing slide. Um, this shows the uh, gap at Triangle Street um, that we hope that we're gonna fill that uh, gap in the sidewalk. And then kind of here are just our next steps moving forward. So um, we are going to, uh, determine the uh, flashing beacon uh, locations for downtown once those, you know, planning for when those are delivered. Um, we're gonna, we need to uh, get town council approval for that new, for the new crosswalk I just showed you. So uh, we need to kind of confirm the design and then receive approval from the town council. And part of, you know, um, coming to you today is to get some feedback on the new crosswalk in advance of us speaking with town council. Yeah, and then just to finish out the grant to build the new crosswalk, um, fill in that gap on Triangle Street and then install the rapid response flashing beacon. So um, that's gonna kind of be our work to implement the rest of the grant um, from here, probably until you know the middle to end of the summer. So. Yeah, thanks for the uh, chance to chat with you all about the grant today. And I'm happy to kind of take some comments and discuss the new crosswalk um, on East Pleasant Street, or if you have any questions about the uh, grant overall. Does anybody have any questions or comments or observations? I'm really, it's Elise here. I'm very happy to hear about the audible beacon things. Mm -hmm. Um, and I do love, like I said before, I really do love the um, new crosswalks that have been put in. I speak as somebody who's vision impaired, I find them so much more visible and wonderful. It's too bad they're so expensive to, you know, yeah. put all over. Okay, thumbs up. Awesome. This is Tori. I'm happy to uh, hear that. Can you hear me? Yep. I'm happy to hear that you've... Um, dug up the sidewalk by Garcia's and you're fixing that because that was difficult to maneuver. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. Yeah, and, yeah every, everything sounds great. So I have a question. If you're walking down Cottage Street um, from Chestnut, you know, like walking on the big part of Cottage Street and you get to Triangle Street, um, no changes are going to be made to that particular intersection at all. That was part of the plan. That's the part you knocked out. Um, correct. Yeah. So there would be uh, no no changes made to that intersection of Triangle and Cottage and Prey Street there. Yeah. Unfortunately, the. Uh, the, the the private property like parcel lines come up right up against the uh, the sidewalk and in some cases the sidewalks actually in private property so that's one issue and then also um, the utility poles just make it very difficult to uh, fit any more signage or you know bump outs in that area 
Hold on a minute. I have to get rid of a phone call. I'll be back, but I have a big problem with this. Okay. Hello? Uh, I'm in the middle of a meeting. I got to go. Bye. There you go. All right. Um, Are you there? Myra, did you want to? Uh, it looks like Tracy has raised her hand. Um, did you do want to? Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Am I, am I yep, we audible hear you. now? We okay. Can hear you. Um, yeah. So um, the purpose of this, um, from at least from the blind people's perspective, is that the roundabout isn't usable. Um, when you get to the end of like, if you going up Cottage Street and you turn right to go to what used to be the corner with the light, remember with the island in the middle, you used to be the corner with the light and then you went uh, down East Pleasant into town, That that's part of the roundabout. So there's no way to cross there anymore. And so we thought that the place to cross would be straight across Cottage onto Prey Street and straight across Cottage onto Prey Street. And then you'd walk and do the right angle on Prey Street. And that's how you would avoid mm -hmm. the whole need to go across that part of the roundabout, which has no signals. And so what you did is great and it's necessary. Um, what you didn't do is solve the problem, which is there's still no way to get from the north to the south because the roundabout is there. There's no controlled intersection anymore. Does that make sense to anybody? Yep. So what, what you did is great, mm -hmm. but what you didn't do is solve the problem which I thought was the whole purpose of this pro project. So maybe I'm just not getting it, but, uh, and I'm not sorry that you're spending the money that way because it's better than not spending it at all. And you did do something that's very important to do. So don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but the whole purpose of the project was to do something about the fact that that roundabout is unusable. So it's not possible to walk from the north to the south across Triangle Street safely. Mm -hmm. And it still isn't. Mm -mm. So I, I don't know what to say. I mean, there's nothing to say at the moment, um, but I want it on the record that this does not solve the problem that the roundabout created. Right. I believe Chris Restrup has raised your okay. hand. Okay. So I think that this, you know, raises an important issue of something that needs to be dealt with. Um, unfortunately, there wasn't enough money in this grant to move um, light pole or move utility poles and um, acquire uh, private property in order to do this intersection properly. And we weren't okay. aware of that when we went after the grant. Um, and so, you know, this has risen to um, a point where we understand what the issues are, but we need to, you know, go after some other kind of grant to get enough um, money behind us to do what needs to be done at this intersection. Okay. I mean, I, I hear that. And I'm not, I, what I, I want it to be real clear that what you did sounds very logical and really good. And you fixed up some of the sidewalk on East Pleasant Street that was pretty bad. And the, the, the sidewalk, um, when you do get across Triangle Street onto Prey, it goes through a bunch of parking lots, mm -hmm. you know, little broken curbs here and there, busted up this and that. When you're using a cane, it's really hard to know where you are. It's really hard to know when you're on the street. So it's, it, it needed a lot of work to make that, that essentially, uh, what do we call that? That's a walk, a workaround for what the, what the roundabout did needed a workaround. And that was the workaround. And it needs a lot, you know, it needs sidewalks and it needs, uh, it needs the, you know, that crosswalk to be secured. I understand what you're saying. And I understand that you need more money. And I would hope that that would be the next thing that you would apply for to do. 
because the roundabout created the problem and this doesn't solve it. I just wanted to uh, keep a, uh, an eye on the time. We're the time. at 12.22. Okay. Uh, does yeah. the DAC want to make uh, comments about the proposed crosswalk uh, along East Pleasant Street in front of Garcia's, which was formerly known as uh, formerly um, uh, Bertucci's? I think we endorse the, I mean, I, what I heard was that people think it's fine to build the crosswalk from Kendrick Park to, uh, what, do you, what are you calling it there? I don't even know what, it, what you call it. But the, it sounds to me like it's a good idea to put the crosswalk in there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I mean, does the group, do you have any comments about that? I mean, um, about looking at it, does it go to the right place? I mean, it, it seems like you've thought that through pretty well. I don't know anything about you know, um, you know how how it actually hits the curbs and all that, but sounds like a really good plan to me. Anybody yeah, else? It, I mean, Elise already said it is. Does anybody yeah, have anything? Yeah. In the, in the photo showed that when it crosses over to the the park side, it, it's a direct access to the walkway uh, leading right. towards the playground, um, and. Um, so that so it, it it aligns well with both sides of the road. Mm -hmm. Right, that looks good. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, as as Ben showed, um, that cross proposed crosswalk will have the uh, thermoplastic uh, crosswalk uh, with the con contrasting colors, and they'd be the tactile surfaces at both ends of the crosswalk themselves. From what we know now, does anyone want to make a motion to endorse the plan as presented? The plan for the new sidewalk is what I mean. Does anybody want to make a plan about the new sidewalk? I'll crosswalk. make a motion. The new, sorry, I'm sorry, crosswalk. Yeah. This is Tori, I'll make a motion. Anyone want to second it? I can. Okay. So, um, all in favor of endorsing the um, new crosswalk from Kendrick Park to, I don't know where you call it, that it's hitting. Mm, Garcia's. Garcia's. Garcia's, okay. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So does anybody, um, I'm, uh, let's see. Oh, I guess we can just vote. Tori? Yes. Saren? Yes. Elise? Yes. Ruth? Yes. And I'll vote yes for the sidewalk. I would I'll like walk. to make a motion that we tell the town that the work is not done um, and that the work that the, the intersection at Triangle and Cottage and Prey Street itself still needs attention yes. um, because of inaccessibility. Um, and I, that's a motion. So I would, I'd like the DAAC to go on record that we do not support or that we, that we think that the town should make every effort to secure funds to, um, improve, to make the intersection yeah, to improve the intersection of Cottage and Triangle and Prey Street sidewalks. Yeah. Right. As a yeah. high yeah. priority. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I have a second. I'll second, I'll second that. Yes. Okay. Tori? Yes. Vote. Ruth? Yes. Elise? Yes. Saren? Yes. And I will vote yes to, and I, okay, thank you. Um, I understand the money problem. I do understand the money problem, but it's, and it I still hope, has to be on the table. I hope they will under look at this issue that is raised about these roundabouts, about mm -hmm. pedestrian crossings, so they don't repeat the same thing on um, Pomeroy Village roundabout. That's why because we it's a big concern in my mind 
how are they going to do it? I think pedestrian crossings could have been handled safer with the present situation, improving what there's right now. So roundabouts, to me, it seems like it's not very safe pedestrian wide in crowded areas where there's be lots of traffic. I mean, pedestrian traffic. Yeah. Well, we already talked about the reasonability of putting roundabouts in heavy pedestrian areas, but yeah. that doesn't seem to have had very much impact. Um, yeah. But, um, okay, so as long as so we have two motions that carried, and I think it's important for us to support what you did. I think the idea that you came up with for building a crosswalk there is a good idea. I mean, thank, I, I thank do you, think Ben, it's a for good idea. attending today's yeah. meeting. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Ira, this is right. Tracy. I had Tracy. a couple, sorry, I had a couple questions for Ben. Oh, is that okay? Is he gone? Um, he's still here. <laughs> He's oh, about here. to leave. I'm yeah. sorry. So I guess um, one was just the whole question is, um, and I agree, Myra, that particularly on the roundabout, one of the really complicated things crossing from the north side of the roundabout where you're talking about, like yep. where the bank, like Bank of America and things are yep. over to One East Pleasant Street, is that it's yes. really challenging because mm -hmm. there's two different islands. So there's actually like five different segments that somebody needs to cross. And, you know, and that particularly, I mean, with a lot of these intersections, I've just found that it's so helpful to actually go there as a pedestrian and cross them and also think about um, how bad it can be if you are visually impaired or even 100%, you know, blind. Or and, if you want, really And you actually, slowly. the other thing too, is you actually need to change directions. It's not a straight, mm -hmm. you actually need to like curve. like, oh, And God. so, and that's yeah. one of the challenges with that roundabout on two different sides of it, is that there's two different sides where you have like five different crossings. Um, but my question for Ben was just about, he would mention that there's the five rectangular rapid flashing beacons that have been ordered and like are those being, I know in the preliminary presentation that you gave to the council, you were looking at putting some of them near the roundabout and if that's like still under consideration. Yeah, where are you gonna put them? That's a good question. Yeah, no, it's a good, uh, it is a good question and something we're still uh, trying to figure out. I think um, they've been ordered. We have, uh, we had enough funding. We thought for five pairs of the audible flashing beacons um, are, intent and i think still our still our intent is to place um round uh, flashing beacons within the roundabout um specifically on the south side kind of from kendrick place over to kendrick park where there are kind of three different crossings that need to be made um we thought that was an important area and i think um you know, one of the, in, in our conversations with DPW, we are, um, there was some concern, I guess, expressed about having um, kind of flashing beacons in rapid succession as you drive up and down East Pleasant Street. And it could actually, you know, it, it could actually detract a little bit from the safety of those crossings if drivers are kind of could be distracted by all the different uh, sets of flashing beacons that they come across as they um, come up and down East Pleasant Street. So we are trying to, you know, find a way to prioritize those those crossings and figure out kind of which ones would have flashing beacons. And, you know, maybe we end up putting them at all of them. Um, but I think we still need to kind of look at that closely and come up with a, with a plan. But um, certainly the plan was to put uh, some at the roundabout crossings. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that one thing that could be considered, I mean, like perhaps is um, having them also at that um, problematic side of the roundabout that Myra is asking about from the Bank of America side to One East Pleasant because it is complicated. Mm, yeah. And I would also encourage, as I had commented, you know, I think I brought this up at the council meeting too, about having them extend, if you're going to have um, 
rectangular rapid flashing beacons on a segment of the street, having it extend all the way across the street and not just like to an island or something, because I yeah. thought that that could create some safety issues. Um, but, I think and I think actually, I mean, one good model you could look at, I mean, one example of a number of rapid rectangular flashing beacons along one street corridor is in Northampton. If you look from downtown Northampton, going south towards the Northampton East Hampton exit, that stretch of street actually has a number of them. And to me, they, as well as a number of roundabouts, and they seem to all work well together. I think people just realize that this is a corridor where they're supposed to go slow. So I don't, think that that's distracting to drivers or okay. that there's so many of them that it's a problem but um yeah, that's helpful. But i, I haven't asked topic, i haven't asked northampton about their experience the whole topic of where to put those is a big discussion sure and thank you i i can't mm. believe we did, i didn't think of it tracy thank you for bringing it up it's not something i mean it, it's something that has to be brought back to this committee about where to put those beacons and I think we have to go out and walk around and figure out where they would be best used um, as part of, we need to be part of the decision about where to put them. Well, and so Myra, I know too and that so Ben, the, the sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so ahead. Um, Myra, to that point, Ben and Chris are scheduled to come to the TAC meeting on the 24th and discuss it more. I'm um, discussed okay. the project and also asked for the tax endorsement on the crosswalk. So I'm sure we'll have questions for them then. And um, for me personally, okay. I'm very happy to see that that one missing segment on Triangle Street is being fixed because it's been it's been troublesome for a long time. So that's just the one right um, on the roundabout side of the cottage mm -hmm. triangle intersection and. There used to even be like a big bar concrete barricade there that's gone, but it's still not very accessible. So that's yeah. a really important <laughs> link. And, and I had always liked the original project proposal that focused on linkage between Kendrick Park and the community pool, right? And that's why I think the town had talked about improving that whole corridor. So, I mean, that's that would still be a priority for TAC too, but we can talk at the TAC meeting. But thank you very much. Hey, Chris, did yeah. you have something to add? <clears throat> Oh, I just wanted to say I'm glad that Guilford will be there um, at the TAC meeting because I think his point of view is important in this conversation. Um, you know, we're juggling a lot of different um, input from a lot of different points of view. We have Guilford, we have the town manager, we have the town council, we have TAC, we have DAAC, we have the planning department, you know, and we're trying to satisfy all these different points of view, including the state. So I just wanted to put that out there. But I also wanted to say that the town council did give the town manager ultimate um, responsibility or um, say in where the rapid flashing beacons go. And so um, town council is um, has given that over to the town manager. So that's a topic of conversation that people can have with the town manager. Um, we agree that this is um, a serious issue, but at the same time, you know, I think we have to take into account what Guilford says about vehicular safety, as well as what Myra and this group is saying about um, pedestrian safety. So lots of different um, points of view, and hopefully some of those will be um, worked out at the TAC meeting on the 24th. Thank you. So perhaps we um, should move on to the the next big portion of the meeting. Um, just mm -hmm. in the interest of time, we have about twenty five more minutes yep. left. Okay. Um, Thank you, so, Chris. And um, yeah. Oh yep. So the next item is discussion right. with with Transportation Tracy. Advisory Committee uh, Chair uh, Tracy Zafian. Um, so Tracy is going to provide a broad outline of the things that the TAC is doing that might benefit from some input from the DAC um, sure. and sort of starting that conversation. Okay, hi. Um, thank you. Yeah, can somebody mute? mute? Yeah, that's, I'm yeah. getting a lot of the that's background really sound too. So, um, but thank you. Um, so um, Maureen, I did have a question. I sent you that like three page summary of the TAC. Did you send that around to the DAC members? 
No, I did not. Okay. I, um, I, I, I didn't have a chance to no, that's okay. read your email, unfortunately. Sorry. Oh, all right. But so I can't I did, forward to the No, that would be great. I mean, I'd prefer not to spend too long talking about it. Um, so I want to just, you know, I've been asking, um, I've been talking with Myra, I think, since we were first talking about roundabouts last um, spring. Um, and and I expressed interest in coming to the DAC meeting. Um, so part of the reason for that is that, you know, I just think that there's a lot of overlap in interests, um, particularly the TAC does have a lot, the TAC does have a lot of interest in accessibility issues. Um, and, and including we have some new members who've explicitly expressed interest related to pedestrian concerns and so on. So um, just a little background on me. So I had been on the public transportation and bike committee back in probably about 20 years ago. Um, so a long, long time before the TAC and Guilford was the that committee's um, liaison as well. <laughs> so he's been here a while. I mean, in those, me in those days, we used to have, uh, I mean, the committee was somewhat small, but we did have a number of people who always came to our meetings, including from the Senior Center, um, from Five Colleges Inc., from UMass Transit, and so on. And so it really was a coalition of people, and um, it was really powerful and helpful to have everybody at the table together. Um, and one of the reasons I had reached out is because there have been some cases where there have been items that I see on the DAC agenda. I do try to attend those meetings when I can, um, because these issues are all of interest to me. Um, that I also think like, wow, TAC is also thinking about this. Like for example, even the shared streets grant um, that Ben was talking about, like we, TAC was never asked to weigh in on that at all. And I know that, you know, triangle is an important mm -hmm. corridor for us and so on. Um, but I also see some cases where things have gone to TAC and I'm like the DAC really, I really wanna know what the DAC thinks. And the questions about accessibility um, are just so important, even for framing how myself and how TAC members think about these issues. Um, and I remember with Kendrick Park, when I first saw the Kendrick Park plans and it came to, I think, the TAC before DAC. And I said, well, what about, you know, we're seeing the plans from DPW and where I say, well, what about accessible parking and things like that? And, you know, I was told at the time, oh, well, the town doesn't have any on-street accessible parking, like ADA parking. And so, it was like, but wait, this is a huge piece if we want to have this place that's welcome to everyone in the community. Um, I mean, I can tell you, I know we don't have a ton of time. I can tell you a little bit just about my background, um, if it's of interest. Um, I have been thinking about transportation topics for a long time. You know, I've worked in transportation and planning and safety and research um, most, you know, for a few decades. And I've also been involved personally, both, you know, serving as a citizen member. Um, I've been involved with some advocacy groups and so on. Um, I currently work at the UMass Transportation Center and there I do a lot of research and I support research for the state DOT, including the shared streets program. Um, and I do have two graduate degrees, one is in um, a master's in um, land, like land use and planning, a, a typical planning degree. And I also have a, a, a master's degree from MIT specifically on transportation. Um, and I'm just also just as I was, I'm really interested in equity and accessibility in general. I mean, around transportation, particularly around safety and access, but I'm also interested in them just in terms of general access and equity. Um, so I've been involved you know, educationally and on other issues as well. Um, and this so isn't Tracy, really- How do you think, how do you think we can communicate about the issues that well, we have I in was, mutual? Yeah, I was really happy yeah. to see, for example, that like on the question of the crosswalk that it is coming, the town manager asked for both, or maybe that was a town council, I'm not sure where it came from, but they also, they asked for the DAC and TAC input. So I think it's just, you know, maybe periodically, you know, we can be on each other's agendas or whatever. And just also, I mean, I know that I always want to, again, TAC and my TAC colleagues would agree with this, is that we always want to hear what DAC thinks. Um, can you send us a schedule of your meetings? Do you have them already? Like, yeah, when, I mean, we typically meet, used to meet on Thursdays. We typically meet on the first and the third Thursdays of the month. 
Okay. Um, we've been meeting at 5.30. There is a little bit of a conflict with TSO. And I know we did move our March meeting, for example, because it's like spring break. So we're meeting on the 1st and the 4th um, Thursdays. But I can send those to you. I mean, we typically decide just a few months ahead, but it's usually in the evening. Um, and we try to have it before TSO. Um, so, I mean, in terms of, I mean, we are on advisory, so I had sent um, Maureen just an overview of TAC because there's a lot of questions about what we are, what we aren't. There's been some people, when um, TAC was shut down over COVID, there were some conversations that were happening about how well there shouldn't even be TAC anymore, that we're redundant with what the council is doing. We see ourselves really differently, and also that we really focus I mean, the council has to do everything. You know, they have to be involved in many different domains, whereas we were focused on transportation and we're focused on it in a comprehensive way, you know, where we're looking at how can we improve our transportation network and services, you know, in terms of accessibility, equity, sustainability, safety, all of it together. And we're not looking at it project by project, but also how some decisions affect other decisions and so on. And so, um, the three-page memo I sent to Maureen, and that hopefully she'll distribute after the meeting, was just you know summarizing that and summarizing how the TAC has been involved in different decisions, um, including related to the roundabouts. We also have some crosswalk guidelines that we just sent to the town manager for getting approved and forwarding to the council. Um, those had been sitting around, I guess, they were originally drafted in 2017. I know the DAC had feedback at the time. Um, that feedback was incorporated and we just sent it forward again because again it was never formally adopted. Um, one thing that we've been looking at a lot um, and talking about a lot is the winter access and maintenance with the sidewalks and the curb cuts and the bus stops and so on. We do have a new member on our committee, he just joined us for the first time last week, who works for UMass Transit and he feels it is definitely the responsibility of the transit authority to clean around the bus stops. Um, it has been an ongoing... What's that? UMass Transit or the PBT? He works for UMass Transit. And he says when he comes across, you know, a bus stop that really needs to be shoveled out, he calls, he calls UMass Transit and says, we need to get over here and we fix this. So we, we're really glad to have him on our committee. Right. Um, I know that the GOL had looked at updating the bylaw on snow and ice and snow and ice removal, which is by, you know, section 3.40. Um, and they didn't get to it. It's on the list of items that they carried over. Um, so I'm hoping that that will come back to them. I mean, there is, I know that you had sent around the article, Myra from, where was it? Um, it's a Berkshire. Pitcher, yeah, per, Pitchfield maybe. Yeah. I mean, one of the things I mean, that I proposal. found, so I personally have really been, because I walk all the time, I personally have been trying to, you know, looking at where there's like poor sidewalk shoveling and so on like that. And I was a little, you know, when I went on the website, I originally submitted a request through C Click Fix, which is like it's touted on the website. It says, you know, any issues, like just put them in here. And I put them in there. And that actually goes to DPW. And what they said, they looked at my, what I filed and they said, well, you know, that's not our issue. You should contact the police, case closed. And I was like, well, wait, it's still not accessible. And so, and then I went to the police website and there's no information there about sidewalks or anything. So I finally ended up emailing, you know, emailing just a general information at police. And I finally got, um, I finally got a response. And I was told that in those cases to call the police. If sidewalks aren't shoveled, you call the police. Mm -hmm. it's, it seems a little odd to me. And I also don't feel totally comfortable about calling dispatch and having them send a uh, you know, a weaponed officer over to somebody's house to say, make sure you yep. shovel your sidewalk. Um, nope. But so I really, I mean, I know that the community safety working group is not focused on those types of issues, but I do think there are a number of calls that maybe they should not be handled by weaponed officers. Um, and so, so I have called a number of times about sidewalks and also about with some of the rental properties about sidewalks being blocked and so on. And I mean, I'd also be curious about how many fines are actually issued on the sidewalk. So we do have a $50 fine. It's up to $50 per every 24 hours. Um, and um, anyway, I hope the GOL will start to look at this again. Um, we are also interested in the better lighting and pedestrian areas. You know, we've talked on and off with Guilford about that. And also just the idea. So there is a Amherst Bicycle and Pedestrian Network Plan that was approved. I mean, 
It was completed by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission in 2019. Um, it's a pretty long document, but one key component is maps that show the priority parts of the network for bicycles and for pedestrians. So a few summers ago, we updated, TAC went through it, you know, section of the map by section, and we updated it. There were some little quirky things in there from the GIS from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, and we asked for those to be updated. Um, we're hoping that there'll be an intern who can help with that work, and then that could go, those maps and the plan could go to the council for approval. Um, but we use those maps in guiding you know, what we're thinking about where priorities are and things like triangle are really important. Um, so, I mean, a few so, projects, uh-huh. I guess in the interest of yeah, time, in the interest I'm of time, trying sure. to figure out how to, how to draw a good line of communication that all the people on both of these committees sure. know about so that if you're dealing with something that we need to know about, we can know about it. And if we're dealing with something that you need to know about, um, then you can know about it. And like, for example, with these beacons, the town manager is going to determine where they go based on, as Chris said, input from everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, when you get input from everybody, you make decisions that aren't good for anybody because you have to. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't know how we can work together on, on stuff like the beacons. Is he going to ask you where the beacons should go? We didn't well, tell him where the beacons should go. I mean, well, what Chris Bressup is saying is that she's saying that the council, you know, in terms of the public way policy, that they put the decisions about beacons to the town right, manager like manager. it's under his discretion so i guess if the council members did feel like um such decisions should actually come you know to the committees then that would have to be revised in the policy i mean there are some other elements including the location of the crosswalks that do go to the council that's why you know ben and chris came today um, well, we didn't know anything about the beacons. We didn't know we were going to be asked about them. We didn't know that we had no a priori knowledge of any beacons and any possibilities of making, you know, recommendations about beacons that we just heard about sitting here. That's not the way to do it. Well, I so, think so. We weren't, so, may I say something? We're, we're not, we weren't really asking you about beacons today. We were presenting okay. the crosswalk plan and we were updating you on the, um, status of the mass dot project so that's fine. um yeah. we we ordered beacons as a result of the original plan that we had in mind which involved the prey street cottage street triangle street intersection when that right. didn't come to pass we had this order for beacons that's been sent out so now we're going to receive beacons and we need to figure out where they're going to go and that conversation hasn't really started yet Okay, and, and, okay. and Jack will be involved in that conversation and well, we will be involved in that conversation before the town manager makes a decision. That makes sense. That makes sense okay. to me. Well, and my okay. and Tracy, them. before uh, I'm gonna, I want to let uh, Pat speak. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. I just have a, a small suggestion, just like I'm a liaison to D, uh, DAAC. Um, I'm wondering if you couldn't appoint a member of DAAC who attends TAC meetings, and if Tracy could get a TAC member to consistently come to DAAC so that you're communicating fairly directly um, on a regular basis. So a small idea. So Pat, I had raised that idea um, with the town manager, you know, just looking back to that history of when there was always that attending, like whether you would have some cross members he thought it was challenging enough to fill the slots, not to do it formally, but you could do something informally. Um, yeah, and, I per, I mean, and I personally, I do try to attend most of the DAC meetings. Yeah. So um, I'm happy to help be that liaison. And, and I do care about- I meetings, but you have more right. than we do. <laughs> and I, yeah, we meet twice a month usually. Yeah. Um, and I brought up the question with the beacons is just in part today, um, just because I know that, Myra, I was just thinking about your concerns about, cottage street and the roundabout and things. And so it was just something that's continued to be in my mind about the beacons. Um, 
But there yeah. are a few projects, I mean, I can talk briefly about, and I know we only have a few minutes. Um, so one was this idea with North Pleasant Street at Kendrick Park. Um, I am really glad that in the end, like TSO, and I do think TSO is an important, is important too. And if we make it clear, if the TAC and the DAC make it clear to TSO, you know, that we do want to be referred to items, like not just one or the other of us, a lot of times it may be both. Okay. And that would be appropriate. Okay. Um, that's good. One, one thing I heard from Guilford at the TAC meeting last week is that with the redesign of North Pleasant Street, much of it, what much of which is intended to improve the safety along North Pleasant Street west of Kendrick Park, now that the playground is there, and also to increase the parking supply, is that um, there's so much on the DPW's plate this year for construction projects. And also there's questions about funding and that there is no dedicated source of funding for those improvements, that those improvements are gonna be delayed. Um, so that really threw me for a loop at first because I know when TSO was considering it last fall, they kept saying, now Guilford, what's the time frame that we need to get back to you in order for this project to be on your construction schedule for the coming season this, this year? Um, and so I think a lot of people were assuming that the work would be done this year. So one thing I've been thinking about, I did reach out to Guilford on this yesterday, and I haven't heard back, um, is just the idea about what traffic calming and safety improvements can still be made, um, even in the absence of like the major construction. Um, some things I'd like to see, and I haven't discussed this with TAC yet formally, though I've talked to a few members, um, is um, still have the street become one way going north because that will cut down on the cut through traffic next to the park and also still move the on street parking from the west side of the street it's currently permit parking over to the east side of the street adjacent to the park on the lower part of the street um, between Halleck and McClellan it's already on the park side. Um, and the TAC has brought up a number of times about the safety issues related to all those driveways and the people who are parking in the permit parking and the very poor sight lines on the west side of the street. So I'd really like to see some improvements this year, if possible. Didn't they say they were gonna do that? So the thing is, I guess the question is because the whole, the project as a whole isn't proceeding until at least next year. Like, is it possible to still do some of the safety improvements now and, you know, get them happening? Um, and again, Guilford hasn't given feedback on that. Um, so the other projects, you know, that we've weighed in on are the Pomeroy Village. I mean, I understand how the DAC has a lot of concerns about Roundabout. I understand those concerns. I know in the fall when TAC was researching it, I sent a lot of research and links, and I've read a lot of materials about um, the accessibility of roundabouts and how to make them safe for people with visual impairments. Um, there are a lot of things that can be done, and in general, I mean, as a person who looked at a lot of, you know, as a traffic safety researcher, I mean, roundabouts are, particularly one lane roundabouts are much safer than signalized intersections. And the risk of fatalities at roundabouts is really limited, particularly with one, one lane roundabouts. You cannot have T-bone intersection. You cannot have people red and red lights. You can't have any of those like types of crashes, which are really high fatality crashes. Um, the most of the crashes are fender benders. You still do not want those to happen, of course, um, but in general, they are safer. Um, the other thing that TAC was asked to weigh in from the old TSO, which I think it would be important for DAC to weigh in too, is about North Pleasant Street, north of the UMass campus from Eastman Lane, where there's the roundabout up to the center of North Amherst, Pine Street, Me Meadow Street, and um, where HOT is. Um, we've walked that area, we've done site views of that area two different times, and we're writing up our findings, and we'll be sending, we'll be sending those to TSO, and I know TSO will be taking up this item again, and they do want to reach out to all the constituencies, so I hope that they will be in touch with DAC at that time, and I would encourage them to do so. Um, one of the things along that corridor, there are some pretty poor sidewalk sections along there, including some very narrow sidewalk sidewalks where there's a lot of trees, um, that have overtaken or, uh, overtaken the sidewalk over time. Also, where Crestview Apartments is, where the bus stop is, there have been two fatalities there of people getting off the buses and crossing the street and being hit. Um, so some of the plans 
the DPW is developing are to have um, more crosswalks as well as to have a roundabout and slow down the traffic there. So, um, and another project that the TAC has pushed is about East Pleasant Street, um, north, like north of UMass and where the sidewalk currently ends going up to Pine Street. So um, that would be an important corridor too for access. I don't know how much people would walk. I mean, like Myra, how, how much demand there would be for walking along there, but there is an area where a lot of students and other people still live. Um, so that's something that the advocates in North Amherst have been talking about for a long time. East or the west side? So oh, I, I believe the sidewalk, well, I don't know that it's going to be it goes surveyed. To Village Park. It's current, right, it stops. You know, it stops when you get to UMass, like to Eastman, right? Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't go north of Eastman. So this would be a continuing corridor to provide that access to all those neighborhoods up there. There should absolutely be sidewalks there. So. Um, you know. Ms. raise your hand. Yeah, if you read the town manager's report to um, town council from, when was that? Last night, I guess. Um, there is a mention of the DPW working on surveys along East Pleasant Street in preparation for um, designing and constructing sidewalks. We've heard a lot from neighbors up there. So I just wanted to give you that report. Yeah. And it was something originally approved by town meeting. You know, town meeting looked at it. And so there have been people asking for it for a number of years. Um, well, for our sake, I hope that the town actually owns the property <laughs> where they have to put then, the sidewalk. And in terms of in town sidewalks, one that came up um, at the council meeting last night that's also come up at TA, the TAC meetings is the questions about Amherst College. You know, Amherst College is building that new building on um, West Street, um, south of like the center of town, where they're gonna have like a huge, you know, building over there that's gonna have classrooms and spaces. And it's gonna, and people, pedestrians are gonna be crossing 116 on the hill, going down the hill uh -oh. to get to the main Amherst College campus. Um, Amherst College has been asking for a number of different crosswalks along that corridor there, in addition to the ones that are already there. I know the DPW has expressed some concerns about the safety of those crosswalks, particularly when you have these poor sight lines with the hill. So that's something that um, TAC will be looking at, and I think that DAC should weigh in there too. I mean, one concern I would have is that if there aren't sidewalks, if there aren't as many crosswalks, that it could sort of be a free for all as used to be on the UMass campus, where in the absence of crosswalks, students are crossing everywhere. So if there's that many students on the um, east, well, sorry, the west side of 116 next to Amherst College. Thanks. So it sounds like. Um... Can you send us a list of those projects and when you're likely to be taking them up um, so that we can know maybe to come to your meetings to talk about those? Those are future projects. And I don't know what your current, uh, your current projects are the same as ours. I mean, so we don't set, I mean, we have this network plan, you know, about like these are important corridors and these are areas where we know there are issues, but as an advisory committee, we're not doing a lot of our own work on them until directed to do so by the council. Got it, okay. Right, so, so it goes to the council or it's a request from the town manager for TAC to look at it. Um, and so, I mean, we've identified these areas and, um, but again, like they're not, we're not really doing too much with them until the TSO says, hey, we're going to be looking at okay. this and we want tax feedback. And of so course, Pat, I'd be happy to keep you in the loop on those. Yeah. Pat, Maureen, Chris, how do we, um, who, who is the person who we should ask to make sure that any transportation or pedestrian related streets, you know, streetscape related questions that would go to TAC also come to us and that would go to us also go to them. Who is, who's in charge of making sure that that connection is made? I have no idea. Chris? So Chris? I would suggest two things. One, the, the person who's really in charge is Guilford, but you can imagine Guilford is very busy and probably doesn't have a lot of time for communication. But what you could do is um, try to get um, each other's agendas 
And, um, you know, that seems like it would be a simple thing. Tracy can send the TAC agenda to um, Myra and Maureen, and um, Maureen can send the DAAC agenda to Tracy and, Ma and Myra. Did I say that right? No, I didn't say that right. No. Yeah, no, but and I, Gilford. We, we, Gilford. We understood. Tracy we understood. And that, <laughs> that works fine. I'll ask yeah. Amber Amber Taylor, who works in the DPW, mm -hmm. is the one who sent out our agendas. I will ask her to add you, Myra. Mm -hmm. Oh, to cool. Okay. Receive them. Okay. Okay. And Maureen, you can ask. You can. Um, I think that we'd all benefit if you, if Tracy oh. uh, received our agendas. Yeah, it's a public I meeting. I think I usually look them up, but yeah. Um, yeah. And our our new TAC liaison, we've been without a liaison since the summer, um, but the council recently chose to have Andy Steinberg be our attack liaison. Um, okay. Because he had been involved with the public bike and public transportation bike committee before, and he also, I think, used to be a liaison with the DAC. Okay. So he has a big interest yes. in these issues and, and he so has Pat, a lot of um, You could occasionally communicate with Andy about absolutely that look like they belong to both. Okay. I can do that. Yes. Yes. Right. No, this is good. I think we really should work together um, because we don't want to work at cross purposes and we don't have contrary interests. So um, I think it would be really good. And I think right. just wearing Thank just my would just wearing my research or hat. I mean, I'm happy, you know, if there's certain things you do want more research on, I'm happy to look into them because Excellent. I look up research a lot for my job. Yeah, wait, no, that that's fabulous. You've actually been a great friend to this committee yes. about a lot of things um, because you've told me things um, that I didn't know. I don't know half as I don't know a tenth as much as you do about this stuff. So um, my family thinks okay. I need another hobby, but it's okay. <laughs> we are, uh, we have ran I've out of time. I just yeah. want to point okay. that out. Um, so okay. we'll- um, Thank you, Tracy. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so and we'll, we have no minutes, right? We don't, unfortunately. Uh, okay. But for next time, there were two things that we wanted to add to the agenda. One being that Berkshire Eagle article. And there was something else that I just emailed Myra about. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, and I, I said, oh, let's make sure to add it to the next meeting agenda. Oh, well, I can look um, the um, but while we think about that, um, I actually have a schedule conflict for the next April meeting um, and we can hash this out via email, um, but I, uh, if needed, but I was wondering if folks can meet on April, hold on a second. I think Sarah yeah. wrote that she could not. Um, yeah, Sarah could not. Yeah, I um, cannot. All right, well, let me send out uh, a couple um, dates um, uh, for consideration because uh, April 12th does anyone know does they not. have a conflict with the 19th? I'm fine with the 19th, Elise. Okay, I don't, I don't actually know. Um, so, I think you're right. Probably yeah, it's fine. Think, the 19th, I mean, it but it's not my preferred. Say I'd that prefer. again, Tori, please. I, I could probably do the 19th, but it's not my preferred. I'd rather do the earlier oh, yeah, date, have another I meeting. think was the 5th. Fifth. The 5th? Fifth? Uh-huh. Would that, that work was... with everyone else, the 5th no. at 11.30? Just the wants to Oh, wait, watching. actually, sorry. I don't think that... Um, I, have to I, don't know what, I don't know what date you gave, Maureen. I can't remember what the date it's is. April 19th. 19th. Yeah. No, but you gave an earlier date. I, no, I didn't, actually. Oh, I thought you did. No. So I cannot do it on Tuesday, the 5th of April okay. and Tuesday, the, the 12th of April. Okay. Well, um, why don't we, we've done this before with sending around other times and maybe we yeah. can do this via um, an email. Um, yep. I'll do, okay. I'll do that. So we can. Okay. All right, so one time you gave us a bunch of times and we chose and we actually worked it out. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. S sweet. Okay. Alrighty, well, um, All right. thank you. This was a this is very interesting meeting, um, and um, hopefully, hopefully, you know, some some something will come of it. I'm very some sad about the Triangle Street. I have to say, I was looking forward to being able to cross that street. Tracy, did you have one final comment? Yeah, I just had a final question in terms of working together. I mean, I would love to work with DAC related to the whole snow removal and sidewalk access bus things. If we can figure, if we can make a little progress before next winter, that would be awesome. That would be great. So, and we wrote a letter each of the last two winters to the town manager 
um, especially because there were businesses that were closed, that were changing hands. We figured we didn't need to get into a turf war about whose job it was to clear something when it wasn't even clear who owned the property or who was responsible. And I don't know how it actually worked out. Um, and I don't, I never heard back from the town manager. I mean, I know for this. Hey, I'm, I'm sorry. Anyway, well, let's, let's continue go. this conversation Absolutely. at the next meeting. Um, All right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.